Over 250,000 of you have checked out my nameplates for season one of Dragonflight Mythic Plus, and a lot of you, as you can see on screen, have been asking me, will I be updating it for season two? And at this point, do you really need to be asking that question? Of course it will be. Happy to say that this video marks the launch of the improved season two plater profile that I will be covering for Mythic Plus for all the eight new dungeons. And it is improved because not only will the profile automatically tell you what to interrupt and which mob to interrupt, it now has additional features such as the tracking of frontals as well as the important spells that is non-interruptible but needs to be stopped by crowd control. I will walk you through all of these features shortly and in the later half of this video, I'll teach you how to install and customize my plater profile. But first, a thank you to people who helped me test all 8 dungeons on the PTR to make this launch before Season 2 happen. It took us a lot of effort to put this together, and if you'd like to show your appreciation, all I ask is you hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, but it will mean the world to me. Alright, let's talk about the features of the Plater profile for Season 2, including the new frontal tracking and important cast that can be interrupted by only crowd control. The highlight of the profile in Season 2 naturally is the returning of the trademark pink coloured caster mobs so you know instantly which are the mobs you need to interrupt in the new dungeons, as you guys can see on screen. And as usual, the orange thick cast bars signal the ones that are a dangerous must kick, while the thinner yellow cast bars are basically spells that are good to kick, but lower on the priority list to be interrupted. Now, for a full explanation of why some spells are a must interrupt, some are a good to interrupt, I'll leave that for the Season 2 Masterclass videos for the 8 dungeons that you can find on this channel. Also, similar to Season 1, the nameplates are color-coded for aggro. As a tank, mobs that you have aggro on are a shade of blue, while mobs you have no aggro on are red, which suggests you should grab them before the red mob deletes your party members. But don't you worry if you are a non-tank player or if you don't like any of these colors, I'll teach you how to customize them at the later half of this video. But right now, I'm very excited to talk about the two new features I've added for the Plater profile in Season 2 Mythic Plus, which I think will go a very long way in elevating your park experience. First feature is the tracking of frontals, both visually and by audio cues. And let's talk about the visual cues first. All mobs that do a frontal that you need to be careful of now is marked in light blue. And when they start casting their frontals, an orange red cast bar will flash with yellow arrows to signal that the mob is casting a frontal and you need to get the hell away from its front. On top of that, I added an audio cue that literally says front. Listen carefully for the next few seconds as this mob does a frontal to see what I mean. I will explain in a later part of this video how to install the audio pack you need to have this audio cue work for you. Now the second new feature added is the tracking of non-interruptible cast that is important enough to be stopped by crop control. Have you ever done Ruby Life Pools in Season 1 and your party just lets Tectonic Slam go through because your nameplates tell you it's an uninterruptible spell? Well, that's a misplay, and you probably know from the AoE damage that your party is taking. And that is something I wanted to fix in the Season 2 profile, and as such, I'm introducing a new color of cast bars here, and that is a purple cast bar for any spells that are a must stop via crowd control, meaning spells that cannot be interrupted by normal means. To make it even easier, it also comes with an audio cue, listen carefully. <laughs> the announcer will say CC, which stands for crowd control when the cast begins. This reminds you to use whatever crowd control you have in your toolkit to stop the cast. So in essence, this improved Season 2 Plater profile not only tracks the important mobs to interrupt, but now you can dodge frontals like a pro and be pre-positioned to avoid frontals, in addition to stopping those pesky casts that cannot be interrupted but can be stopped by crowd control. I hope these features all help you climb faster and further in the Mythic Plus ladder for Season 2. And that said, now comes to the technical part of this video. How do I install everything if I'm a new user, I didn't install your profile for Season 1? As well as some FAQs about customizing scripts and colors in Plater. For demonstration purposes, I will assume you are a brand new viewer with no prior experience with add-ons. So moving on, if you'd like to replicate the audio and visual cues of my nameplate that I show in this video, there's two very simple steps. For step one, if you want the audio cues like a demo in this video, you need to follow the following. Now, if you don't care about audio cues, you can just skip directly to step two, it's timestamp in the video. And naturally, the visual cues will still work without audio cues. But if you want audio cues like the announcer saying front or CC, you have to download two add-ons. 
namely Shed Media and Shed Media Corsises. Now, don't you worry if you don't know where to get these two add-ons, just click on the install link in the description below. It has written instructions with link to these two add-ons you need. The former is an add-on that allows audio clips to be imported into World of Warcraft. The latter is an add-on by a very famous Wikora creator with a collection of helpful audio clips that includes front and CC that we are using in my Plater profile. Install both of the add-ons, and that's all you need to do for the first step. Okay, let's move on to step two, installing the Plater profile. The very first thing you need to do under step two is to install the Plater add-on. And if you don't know where to find it, again, defer to the installation page that I linked in the description below. Follow the link to install Plater add-on. After you've installed the add-on and you booted up your game, the nameplates will look basically something like this, very different from what you've seen from the video so far. So the next step is to actually import my Plater profile for season two. Go ahead and type slash Plater and press enter on the chat box and this will basically pop up. Now I want you to click on the profiles tab and then click on import profile and it'll prompt you to paste a string here. Tap back out to the installation page for my nameplates. You wanna look out for the link as you can see on the page that links out to my import strings for Plater Profile Season 2. Copy the string on the page and then you can tap back into the game and press Ctrl V to paste all your data. And you can see at the bottom, it says new profile name, Quasi Plater. I'll click OK here. And after you click OK, the game will reload. Once it reloads, all the unit frames will now look as though you know it looks like in the video, as you guys can see over here, that all the nameplates are now in order, right? The color scheme of all the important mobs to dodge frontals are now in play. And if I move further down the dungeon, you can see casters are being marked as pink. If you can see all these colors, it means you successfully imported my profile. So next up is the FAQs on how to customize my profile. One of the more common questions I get is how do I color the mobs differently? Let's say I don't like frontal mobs to be light blue. I wanted another a shade of color. What you do is type slash plater again, and you bring up this menu here, um, and I want you to click on NPC color and names. Once you've done that, you'll see that under every NPC, there's a drop down menu. It's as simple as going in to click what color do you want them to be. So in this case, the matron that does a frontal cleave, I want it to be represented by light green. I just click on light green and it will change and it will basically save the data itself. You can also use this NPC color and names tab to just track what you have colored all the mobs. You can also change it from here, right? So you don't have to visit the dungeon and manually just color the mobs. But something I do need to caution you though is for example, if for your casters, right? You don't want them to be pink. You want all your casters to be something like sky blue. Just note that you need to go and hunt down every single caster and change them to the same color scheme. I've already done the hard work. I've colored them all in pink for you. So you don't have to do the hard work, but just keep in mind, you need to kind of change everything if you're gonna standardize them to a different color. While we are talking about the colors of nameplates, some people will also ask me about thread and the colors of how the nameplates will differ if you have thread or you do not have aggro on the mobs. So the way to sort this out is go to colors and thread tab. And you can see this is very self-explanatory. It says color when playing as a tank. When you have aggro as a tank on the mob, it's something like a light bluish shade. And when you have no aggro on the mob, it's red. Now, if you don't like the colors I picked, you can just pick any colors you want. It's self-explanatory. Same thing if you are a DPS or healer, you can see below here, color when playing as a DPS or healer, you can change this accordingly to what you want. So regardless of whether you play a tank, healer or DPS, you can customize all the nameplates based on different kinds of threat configurations. Now, just to be clear, I have a threat override that is flashing in red for tanks, which means if you are a tank, and let's say I pull these five mobs, right? These three mobs and the priest over here and this matron. You can see that what's happening here is that it shows in this shade of uh, blue that I have aggro on all of them, right? The matron I have aggro on as well, and the priest I have aggro on as well. It's just that they are colored light blue to signify frontals and basically pink to signify a caster. In the event that I lose aggro on the matron or the priest, I have a threat override as a tank where basically their initial colors will turn into red. And then only after you have regained aggro on them, will they flip back into the original color, which is basically a teal color and basically a pink color for casters. It's just my way of reassuring tanks that even if you color mobs a certain color, Plater is smart enough to basically display the loss of threat as something more important. But if you're DPS, that doesn't really matter to you. So the next question is, what if let's say I want to change um, the color of the cast bar? Let's say I pull the maggot here, right? And the maggot does a frontal, we know that. I'm just waiting him for him to cast the frontal. Essentially, 
we are looking for something called rotten bowel from the maggot here. You can see it's in purple. It's to signify a cast that is stunnable, that is an important cast that you need to stop, remember? So let's say I don't like the color, right? What I can do is go to cast color and names, and I can simply look for rotten bow, right? Sorry, let me bring this closer to the screen. You can see to the top right here is basically a search field, right? I can type rotten bow, I found it, and currently it's in an orchid color. And let's say I don't want it to be orchid anymore, I want it to be a dark orange, I want it to be orange red, I can do anything I want, right? And this is also where you select the sound. It currently is CC, and that's basically what you heard in the demo in this video. But you can select any other form of like, you know, sound cues as well from, you know, exit to fixate, anything you want at all, right? So you can actually customize a lot of things here. But that is how you color the cast bar as well as the sound cues for different types of abilities. So another FAQ I always get is how do you classify which cast are important and what is not? How do I customize that? So you can see that the priest is casting Blood Bolt here. It's a thin yellow bar, which means that it's good to kick, but it's not massively, massively compulsory to kick it. Now watch what happens when the priest casts an important ability. It's now marked as tick and basically orange, right? So how do you customize what kind of abilities becomes important or not? It's a really simple process, type slash plater, click on the scripting tab, under search, type big, and it says cast big alert plater. And you can see over here, there's a list of triggers that are already added. You can see Gift of Kuhun is one of them, right? So let's say you want to remove Gift of Kuhun as one of the important cast bars. You can just click on this cross over here and it deletes the trigger. There's also some fancy stuff you can do here, which is basically the cast bar color. If it's an important cast that you need to kick, you can even modify the height of the cast bar. But the point is, if you want to add your own important abilities that you must interrupt, you just click on this field here where it says add trigger, and you can simply type the name of the ability and press add, and you will basically add it to the script. So next time you encounter the spell, it will be that thick orange cast bar that you want. All right, last FAQ, you can see this yellow flashing uh, arrow here on the maggot's rotten bowl. That's to signify frontal. Let's say you don't like this, right? You don't like this yellow flashing uh, thing on the savage cleave to signify a frontal. Let's say I want to remove that. It's also very simple. Click on scripting and then under the search field here, you type frontal and you click on the script here that is the search result. And I want you to scroll down and find the ability that you want to remove the yellow arrows from. So in this case, if I remove Rotten Bow by clicking on this X here, the little yellow arrows will no longer show up on the cast bar. So that's how you can customize um, you know, the scripts for frontals as well if you wanted them to show this yellow flashing arrow. And with that, you now know everything in order to be a god at interrupts, dodging frontals, and stopping very important cars with crowd control. All that's left to do is to climb the Mythic Plus ladder in Season 2. If you found this video helpful, do subscribe to the channel. That will mean the world to me. I will keep you posted on Dragonflight Season 2 Mythic Plus tips. You don't want to miss that. I also stream on Twitch. Feel free to swing by to hang out. Last but not least, big thank you to my Patreon subscribers for keeping the channels alive. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you soon.